In just over a year, Europe will benefit for the first time from satellite services in the S-band. In early 2009, the W2A satellite, which is currently under construction at Thales Alenia Space, will be deployed at the 10 degrees east location in geostationary orbit. It will carry into space the first S-band payload serving Europe, ordered by a joint venture between UTELSAT and SES Astra. For the first time in Europe, terrestrial and satellite networks will operate together using a common frequency band in a single network, which will be totally transparent for users. This complementarity of terrestrial and satellite infrastructures will make it possible to deliver access to S-band services nationwide to an unlimited number of users, irrespective of location. The S-band is much more than just an additional frequency resource for existing terrestrial and satellite networks. Its arrival opens a whole new space for telecommunications in Europe one that is optimized for content delivery and two-way communications for small mobile terminals, including onboard vehicles. The S-Band offers tremendous development potential for a wide range of sectors. Terminal manufacturers, the automotive industry, network operators from telecommunications to motorways, content publishers and broadcasters. Major industry players are cooperating to create optimal conditions for large-scale European deployment of services that are already showing substantial worldwide success. Over 15 million Americans now listen to satellite-based S-band digital radio. In South Korea, mobile television has already won over more than 6 million users. Just two years after initial broadcasts in Japan, there are nearly 10 million mobile television viewers. 1.6 million new mobile TV handsets are sold in Japan every month. Using a 12-meter S-band antenna, the W2A satellite will operate a substantial volume of new bandwidth, which represents 30 MHz on the uplink and 30 MHz on the downlink. This capacity is reserved for mobile satellite services and available in all European countries. Earlier this year, the DVB consortium agreed the specifications of a new European standard called DVB-SH, which is perfectly complementary to the already validated mobile standard DVB-H, as well as 3G standards for cellular networks. In urban areas, widely deployed terrestrial transmitters will take over from satellites for urban canyons and indoor reception. Outside urban areas, notably in locations lacking terrestrial infrastructure, mobile terminals and vehicles will be able to directly receive signals emitted by W2A's S-band payload. Thanks to the large antenna installed on the W2A satellite, S-band service reception will be possible with very small omnidirectional antennas. Whether installed in mobile phones, PDAs or in the bodywork of cars, or in rail or in-flight equipment, these antennas will be embedded in the terminal. Users won't even need to know whether the information they're receiving is coming by satellite or via a terrestrial relay transmitter. For mobile television viewers, S-Band ensures higher quality, wider choice of programs and anytime, anywhere access. Each country in Europe will have the potential to deploy a package of several dozen television channels and digital radio stations. Smart antennas for portable telephones will optimize reception quality providing users with the highest quality digital reproduction of sound and images. And the newest generations of mobile screens will satisfy consumers' demands to watch their choice of television programs when and where they want. In towns or in the country, going for a walk, in the car, or in a train. The S-Band payload will open important opportunities for location-based and interactive applications for the motor industry. As vehicles become increasingly intelligent, they will also become permanently connected via the return channels the S-Band can provide. On the safety side, with automatically or manually activated emergency alerting systems, it will be possible to advise on the nearest recovery service or garage in the event of a breakdown. 
cars will also be able to automatically pay motorway or city tolls, while passengers make hotel or restaurant reservations for a nearby neighbourhood. These services interfaced with the navigation devices which are increasingly present in new vehicles and will become a standard feature with the arrival of the Galileo system, will enable drivers to access local information and bring real-time added value in transport. Cars will also represent invaluable sources of information for authorities as well as for civil protection and monitoring services. For example, it will be possible to monitor traffic flows by collecting travel speeds, weather conditions and pollution indexes from vehicles. On the return link, the spectrum will be used for delivering real-time information on road traffic delays or weather conditions, in the same way that navigational warnings are already displayed for maritime security. Drivers, the motor industry, weather agencies and environment authorities will all benefit from this new interactivity. In addition to opening a new range of applications for consumer and professional markets, the S-Band represents a unique solution for monitoring and for rescue teams in extreme conditions. If terrestrial networks are destroyed, or in isolated regions with no infrastructure, it will guarantee a standalone and fully secure communications network everywhere, and in all weathers, via small, ubiquitous mobile terminals. The S-Band is much more than just an additional frequency resource to existing terrestrial and satellite networks. Its arrival heralds the opening of a whole new space for telecommunications in Europe. Available in 2009.